surgery done. <laughs> Man's is feeling pretty good. Back on the recovery road and back to making the biggest comeback in sporting history. Trust me. My fight with Lee, it was good. We got the win, but uh, it was by no means the best performance that I could have possibly put out there. I've been through the darkest of times. Do you know what I mean? I've been through the worst of it all. So I've already experienced all that and I don't want to go back there again. And not only that, it's like my mind's numb to any bad sort of emotions. I'm like, I'm literally just going, I need to go out there and put it all on the line. Physically, like I haven't knocked someone out cold with, a, with my hands in the past. So to do that, my dad, I remember before the fight, I was like, but this is why can't you knock someone out with hands? I want knock out with hands. And then <laughs> next thing you know, I'll go, and, I'll go and knock them out with my hands. So that was one big feeling. The next big feeling is obviously for, again, all my visions to start coming to, coming mm -hmm. to fruition again. In one year's time, send a message for myself just 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 keep going you're almost there by this time next year i expect to be uh having my comeback to the cage and winning be more confident be more brash really show people who you are because when you do that you're going to be a world champion it's in the times of bad when you keep believing good things are going to happen that they will come through and i definitely felt that before where, where, when i made it to the ufc the first time so we're going to do it again. It's only a matter of time. The road to recovery and coming back. We all have adversity, you know. This will be the true test. Can you? Can you come back? Can you go and fight in the UFC again? Uh, so this was last Wednesday, so exactly a week ago. Um, my manager sends me a message saying, uh, we've got a fight for you on March 24th for Cage Warriors. So, okay, we said to just do again. And we've been prepared to fight in Cage Warriors. Not to say that I was a little bit disheartened, but I was like, okay, cool. It's okay. This is part of the process. I already knew. So, you know, I just kind of just accepted it. You know, I had like maybe my moment to be like, darn it, wouldn't it be great to fight in the UFC? So this is how day was. And this day was very tough for me. If, if UFC still don't believe us after two wins, and particularly one after such convincing knockout. I was like, Okay, I guess if the UFC don't want me. Uh, in the next 10 minutes, and then it takes five minutes for me to get to ch like it's not far at all. And then as soon as I'm on the, tr on the train, I'm, I'm good to go, yeah. All right, sick. All right, nice one, brother. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll meet you soon, yeah? All right, nice one, brother. All right, right. In this world, you can't just be all sunshine and rainbows because <laughs> people are out there to win and they'll do whatever it takes. So I have to have the same mentality if I'm going to achieve the same thing. How have you got darker? So the best way to describe it is my, my training partner and good friend, Will Curry. Uh, he was the first person that come and, or first fighter that um, came to see me at my, first and only fighter that came to my house after my operation. And uh, he traveled all the way from, from Victoria just to see me and just to hang out with me just for a couple of hours, just to say like, bro, like, I, I know you're gonna come back. Just, uh, you know, just believe in yourself. And the one thing that he taught me, cause he saw that I was very still emotional, very, you know, uh, very empathetic, very sympathetic, you know, just me as a being, you know, I like to be honest, kind and, and, and caring. But he says, what I can teach him, Modestus, is the ways of the Sith. <laughs> it's almost so weird, but it's, he said, you don't want to go so far gone that you become a Darth Vader and you just completely destroy yourself, but you need to have the red lightsaber within you, you know? And that was one thing that really resonated with me because I'm like, he's absolutely right. It's almost like purple lightsaber, you're somewhere in the middle. You've got to have the side where you're honest, kind, caring, and, and you know, um, people can, re you know, you're relatable to people, but at the same time, you've got to be ruthless, you've got to be violent, you've got to be a killer, you've got to take what it is that you want. You've got to realize that people are out for themselves. And uh, these are things that I'd learned after these bad situations that had happened to me. I wouldn't have learned it otherwise. I, I would still 
look to the good side of people. It's like so a situation that bad that happens finally tells you like, okay, Modestus, you need to figure something out here. And Will was the first person to introduce that to me. Never being popular, and this is the only way where I really have like an identity. This is to show everyone that you can come back from adversity and setbacks and defeats, and you can go and uh, take over and, uh, and, and achieve anything that you really want to in life. So I, I went to training in the evening, did my training session, got to about, uh, so I was driving home, I was about five minutes from home. This particular day, I even now know it was Wednesday. And uh, I was training with one of my uh, guys who have been talking and said, I said to him, one country in the whole way, I never would go, even this looks very beautiful, but I never would go is Australia, because it's so far. And it was Wednesday. I got a video call from my manager and it was like at like 10.30 at night and um, he doesn't normally video call me but I thought he was going to video call me to tell me like bro that guy he's decided that he doesn't want to fight I was like and that's what I generally thought was going to happen and then uh, and then he says bro what's your, what, what's your weight like I said and still at that point I, did, I had no inkling as to what was going to happen and I was like um, I mean you know I'm not fat so you know I guess I guess that's a good thing I said, you know, my weight's good, like it's low, it's just not like too crazy high. He goes, the next thing you, next thing you know, he tells me you're fighting in Australia in, in two weeks. I'm like, wait, what? He says, you're back in the UFC, baby. I was like, no freaking way. Like already at that moment, I just, I just, I just burst into tears, like just ha overjoyed because, and I was just telling him on the phone, I'm like, what we've been through to get back to this point. And then I got home. And I thought it was funny because, so I looked distraught because I, I was all over the place. My heart was racing. I was like, oh my God. And then I got back upstairs and then my, my stepmom um, rose. She, like I said, listen, I've got to tell you something. I need to have you in the sitting room. She was like, is everything okay? Like, is it like, is something? So, and then my dad was in the other room, yeah. And my wife was rose, they together. I said, why are you showing me what's wrong with those guys, you know? Uh, and, and I still just barely came here, and then my dad's coming back to me, oh, for God's sake, I, told, I just got in the bed, barely got to the bed, you know. So my dad was in the other room, and he was about to go to sleep, he, he goes, oh, what the fuck, my body hurts, like, why, why are you basically getting me out of bed? Like, for what? Like, surely it's not that important sort of thing. And then, uh, and then I said, nah, trust me, dad, you're going to want to hear this. Start jumping over us, he said, we're back to UFC, we're back to UFC, he said and to me, you know, and we just, all been jiving and he just screaming. For him, it was a very big moment. For me, it's kind of, I knew he was the UFC level. Yeah, I basically just shouted, you know, we're back in the UFC, like, you know, hugged them, cried with them. And yeah, it was a very emotional moment for all that hardship. To think that within 16 months, I had the worst injury in, in in quite a long time like i'm talking in probably in ufc history one of the worst injuries uh got cut from the ufc become a two-time champion and got re-signed within 16 months just before i'm 30 but 29 i'm looking to get back into the ufc yeah so i turned 28 in february 27 right now i'm gonna i have this actually written down in my my goals book at home just before i'm 30 but 29 i'm looking to get back into the ufc the comeback is only solidified when I go back to the UFC and win and win impressively. So Tyson Pedro, uh, he's got a five and three record. You know, he's he's a very experienced fighter. You know, he's young, he's experienced, he's very he's very good. He's explosive. You know, he's had two two big wins off the trot after his you know serious knee injury. So he's the most well-rounded fighter I've probably fought out of my whole career. So that's the only bad thing was obviously. We arrived Wednesday, four in the morning, and Modesto's fought in a few days. So clearly, we knew this is what set up. Everyone thought is gonna lose yes. this fight. No doubt about that. When I walked out, I'm gonna tell you something where it, I'll tell it to you now, and you think he's chatting a lot of shit. But genuinely, I can't explain it. But I was standing there with all the cameras, all the people, all the UFC staff, all the fans out there. They're playing the video, and I could just see a flash of light out in the distance somewhere and I could just see my dad's parents like they both passed away 
but they always give me amazing they, it's almost like their heads their faces were rushing to my body saying you got strength and uh I literally, I, ta I like, I literally like shook my dad. I said, "Hey, listen, our grandparents are watching over us. We're gonna go out and do this guy." And when he said that, I thought, "Oh, we're just gonna be in and we'll sell it." I already knew he's gonna win. I knew he's gonna win, no matter what. When we got in the fight, we knew what we had to execute, and I did what I was told. And I wanted to land shots. I wanted to be more, uh, more active. I wanted to do more things in the fight and show people what I'm, what I'm about. When they said 30-27, I'm like, yeah. that looks good for me. Yeah. Uh, and then 29-28 and 29-20, I'm like, they're like, as soon as they said the 30-27 scorecard, I'm like, that's got to go to me. Uh, and then when I got my hand raised and I heard my name, it was just such, such a massive relief. I'm like, oh, we, fu we fucking did it, you know? And um, just to finally get my hand raised in the UFC again was such a, an amazing feat. And to go three rounds against Tyson Pedro, who <laughs> Everyone thought I was going to lose to this guy. We're beating top strikers from stand up. Tyson Pedro talking trains with Israel at the sign. I just saw my dad and I just, I just, you know, hugged him and, and we, we, we kind of just embraced each other. I was, I was crying because I told him, I like, look at what we've been through. It's different because he's my son and we also have a very good relationship. We're just having fun together, we're joking. It's been, we're not only father and son but who is the best friends you know look at we said we'll do it i told you i'll do it and we did it you know? yeah it was amazing I, I mean i was been over the moon because to be honest you kind of even think it's real you just be tyson better we're talking not just some guy you know it, it, it's been he's so popular one thing that really motivated me was knowing that i would look back on this that the story would be that much sweeter having gone through all of this. It will be a massive testament to never giving up, um, to always chasing your dreams, going for your goals, no matter what the circumstance, and that you can achieve anything if you just put your mind. If I could send a message to myself at 32 years old, it would be like, it would, for, in my head, it would be, congratulations, you've just become the UFC world champion. And uh, yeah, truly fulfill everything you can in life, but also work your ass even harder because you've got to defend your belt now. I'm going out to kill my opponent, not to just mess around, play around. I literally think of it as though I'm, I'm a soldier and you have, you, it's almost like you know you're gonna die anyways. You, you, there is 2,000 free, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but you are gonna die at some point. You're going out there in front of 3,000 men with swords and like spears and arrows, you know? At some point you're gonna die. But what, are you gonna just sit there and let them chop your head off and that's it, you're done? How, where's your legacy? Where's, you know, what are you leaving behind? You're leaving nothing. You're leaving the signs of a pussy behind if you do that, you know? It was, it's true, but you die on your freaking shield. You know, you go out there, you can kill six, eight men, 10 men. You live to fight however many days until it, eventually, the, you know, when it is your time. So that's, that's the mindset. I'm going in there, I'm willing to die, but I'm also willing to kill.